dive into a starting 11 yeah, boys? Yeah, sure, sure, let's go let's go let's go okay uh, i i don't expect to see much rotation um for me i I'll, I'll just go ahead and and hit you with it i would pretty much go with what we saw here versus sevilla except i would get danny almo in for ansu fati slide rafinha back out wide so i'm talking kunde kubarsi martinez balde Casado and Pedri, Lamine, Almo, Rafinha, and Lewandowski up top. And then, surprisingly, Inaki Pena between the posts. I thought we'd be sitting here talking about Chesney, but the fact that he hasn't gotten any playing time for Barca, I, I can't imagine, right? And I think Fla- Hansi has even come out and said it's going to be Pena, not, uh, not Chesney between the posts. Yeah, right, same. I, I'd go for the same. Uh, as you said that instead of Ansu Fati, you are going to be picking Danny Olmo. I'll pick mm-hmm. between Danny Olmo or Frankie Young, whoever is yep. uh, fitter, like depending mm. on their fitness. Because Danny Olmo didn't get any min- minutes today. He's also back from an injury. He didn't get yeah. m- it. Maybe because he wants to keep him fresh for the buying game. And it may be that he plays there. So that would be good too. But uh, even if he's not the one starting, I would love to see Frankie Young with Casado. And then Pedri up top. So, either way, that's the only change that I'm expecting to. The lineup is supposed to be same, a part of that. Yeah. It does give us a little defensive boost in the midfield compared to uh, Casado and, and Pedri, I think. I, I, where I, are you at? Look, I think it's very interesting. I was also thinking the same thing about it's. I don't think it's going to be Danny almost straight from the get go because he hasn't gotten any minutes in this game. I think if you were to play on Wednesday, you would have got some minutes, particularly to stretch your legs, seeing that we are like, what, 3 0 up in half time mm-hmm. already. So you could have rotated whenever you wanted in the second half. He didn't play anything. So I particularly think it's more going to be about Frankie de Jong. And I really wouldn't put it out there. Like, I wouldn't stretch it out there that maybe Gabio Fermin gets into the lineup. I really wouldn't. I really Ooh. wouldn't be surprised. Why do I say that? Because I think that they have already gotten the minutes here. Maybe Hansi Flick is someone strikes me as someone who looks at the fitness, something very important. He knows that anything wrong with this fitness, everything, the whole pressure starts to crumble again. And and he had plenty of options, like I said, to put in these players in this game against Sevilla, and he didn't. So that for me is the biggest indication that right now when it comes to the pecking order in terms of fitness, maybe something, it's it's different, right? Why would you put Frank De Jong in after not playing this game when he had a knock, you know? Like, it just doesn't make any sense to me. So I think that certainly Fermin could be a could be playing in this game or or I also wouldn't be surprised if Ansu Fati played as well. Like, we've seen um, we've seen at the start of the season, Ferran Torres not having a good game, but Flick consistently trusts him. Yeah, that's you know? true. That's true. So yeah. Ansu Fati, if, if he saw Fati today, how he played what? He played all the minutes, almost all the minutes, right? Yeah, he came off pretty late. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if Fati plays against Bayern from the start. We're almost okay. like, like, cause, cause, look, if, if Fati wasn't ready when Eddie Garcia got injured during the, during the, during the pre training or whatnot. Yeah somebody else would have come in, you know? Yeah. Not Fati. So Fati right now looks to me as the only player that we have on the bench that can play the full 90 minutes or at least like 60% of those minutes. I would yes. I would say that the choice of Ansu Fati here in this match particularly was because we were playing Sevilla. I believe uh, Sevilla, in, as I said, like we all know that it was supposed to be an easy game. And that is why. It might be true that uh, because he has been given so many minutes and Buga said the right thing that uh, Hans Flick really put in the faith with Ferran Torres as well. So it might be the case. But I personally don't expect that to happen against Bayern Munich because that's, as we all know, a big game. And midfield is a place which Barcelona would want to control, like by any means. So, yeah. I mean, putting in an extra midfielder instead of Rafinha, like keeping... Because putting in Rafinha... Instead of Ansu Fati, and then having an extra midfielder is like having two extra midfielders because you're not just putting in Frankie Young, for example. Rafinha is going to drop in anyways. He's somebody yeah. that tucks in, helps you in the midfield if you need it. So yeah. that, that is going to really increase the number in the midfield. So from that sense, I feel like picking a midfielder makes a lot of sense. Could be, I, I don't expect it to be Gavi, 
personally could be him i don't expect him to start though my starting 11 would still i think be between franky or danny olver depending on who is uh, in a better shape but uh, yeah I, I, for, for me lopez could be a good shout as well oh it'll be interesting it'll be interesting um i know we're going to do a combined 11 but I, i feel like it almost makes more sense to to talk about a, a starting 11 versus real madrid now as well um just to compare and contrast a little bit because for me i know he's just coming back and maybe it does depend on how much playing time he gets versus bayern i would start gavi against real madrid because i i think the bayern match is going to be a little bit more technical and not as gritty as the real madrid match i think it's going to be a bit of a dog fight in the el clasico and you you want the bulldog out there you want to get him those minutes so with respect to his injury and and match fitness i ooh, against real madrid i i might go i might go franky pedri gavi lamine levandowski rafinha same back four I think I think saving Dani Olmo to off the bench like we saw against Rayo Vallecano can still be a good wild card. So yeah. I'm thinking about this game as two isolated events. You know like how can I get the win out of here? You know it's not like I'm thinking I'm not thinking about this game of like what's going to be the impact after them. I'm thinking about an, particularly like in their own vacuum 90 minutes let's play this game. And I think that if Dani Olmo is not at 100% you better keep him off the bench fresh coming in and i i i'm still going with the same i think i think that the bayern lineup would mostly be very similar to the ramadi lineup i would almost bet that it would be the same thing um, really I, I, yeah i think so um hmm. particularly because the way the hansi flick plays we we've seen we've even seen it with with iñaki peña in the sense that i i i sent a tweet out saying that It's not a surprise for me that Chesney is not there. I mean, I would have liked to see Chesney playing, but I am surprised that in a way it's like you need to respect the sort of hierarchy for the players because if not anything everything is going to be anything's going to cr- everything's going to crumble. You mean you need to respect that Iñaki Peña hasn't put anything wrong, hasn't done anything wrong yet. So, how can you let's say what excuse would you use to just take him out of the team you're not good enough i mean that's okay like if you want to be that guy but for me his flick is very very like i mentioned before he understands the the way that the club moves around how to sort of man manage these players and yeah i wouldn't be surprised if it's the same team i wouldn't be surprised if there's already sort of hierarchy and even i wouldn't be surprised if they have already talked about already all together like okay this is what's going to happen and he already has his substitutions lined up you know because it seems that so. whenever yeah. a player is um i go back to the time where Ansu Fati was om- almost came in and he didn't i don't know which game yeah. was it but he was ready to come in and he didn't um it's like I think that hierarchy is already set there. Hansi Flick has spoken to the players, so let's see how it goes. Mm, okay. Marco, what do you think? Marco may have frozen there for a second. Oh, no, he's no, he's I with us. Okay. <laughs> Marco, what what do you think? Are we going to see changes from Bayern to Real Madrid, or are you thinking, like what Buga said, maybe maybe it's the same 11? See, obviously that depends on how the game goes, first of all. If, like, yeah. for example, let's just say that we have a very positive result out of the Bayern game, it would not make sense to make much changes going in the next game against Real Madrid. Okay. Uh, coming on to the, as you mentioned, the Gavi point, though it, it obviously makes sense. Like, if if uh, Gavi was fit and I'm playing against Real Madrid, that is the first name I'm putting on the team sheet. Like, Gavi, okay. We are, we are playing Gavi. And <laughs> now let's there. see. Yeah. Nah, that, that, that's where we build from if we are playing Real Madrid. But yeah. uh, as I said before, like for me personally, too early, I would uh, like to take the similar lineup from Bayern Munich to Real Madrid, make a couple of changes depending on the performances. Uh, I think if Frankie de Jong is fit, this is his time to prove his worth to the team, these two matches. Because in wow. comparison to all the other players that we have, like 
if for example Dan Yolmo plays in this match he doesn't play that good he doesn't he's not of that much of use people are still mm-hmm. going to be very patient with him with sure. everyone else yeah but i think uh, taking all things into consideration these two matches are the matches where you expect frankie dion to finally step up and tell people that okay i i am worth the wait the patience that the fan base has given to me certainly in a situation where all the players around him have been so injured he was he had a little bit of discomfort and he was given rest he the man just said that he was fine today he had discomfort mm. yesterday but he was fine today yeah. so i hope that he's playing both matches and playing good if yeah. not playing both matches my second uh, priority or second option is going to be daniel almo oh Okay, I'm excited, boys. I, th- these matches can't come soon enough. I, I w- honestly, I wish we were playing them tomorrow and the next day. I, <laughs> I want to get these in. I want to get these done. Uh, it was good to see Barcelona come back, uh, especially after an international break, um, jumping a, a little bit back again. A lot of times when you see Barcelona, and, and a lot of clubs, to be fair, but uh, as, as someone who watches a lot of Barca, Barcelona coming back from an international break, we're sluggish. We're a little bit disconnected, but none of that. So I, I'm I'm gonna trust in Hansi that he's gonna have the right lineups that he's gonna get everybody's head in the right space. Because I think Marka, to your point, that's a big part of this, right? The uh, Bayern Munich match in particular, making sure that we don't have that mental block going into this. So I'm pumped for it. I'm ready. I'm excited. Any other talking points on starting eleven? Should we give? Let's let's maybe give. Uh, let's do combined eleven, and then and then we'll do predictions. How about that? Yeah, sure, sure. Let's go. Okay. All right. So Bayern Munich first. Let's let's uh let's maybe go line by line. Let's start in the back. Who's starting no, between the Manuel posts? Neuer. Manuel Neuer. Yeah, Manuel. Manuel, Manuel, Manuel Neuer. Neuer. Was yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> Would there have been any chance if Chesney, you know, had already played one game? <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. You know, I I There's feel no like some... that. Yeah, somebody would have made the argument if he came out and, you know, had a clean sheet today and had some amazing saves or something like that. You could maybe be silly and make the argument, but no, realistically, it's it's Manuel Neuer. Um, it would be interesting if we had a fit Ter Stegen. That would be a, an interesting debate, but I, I think it would Nagelsmann still would go to Neuer. Nagelsmann would disagree with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, he'd, he'd pick Manuel Neuer any day. Yeah. All right. So back four then, Buga. Let's let's start with you, sir. Who you got in your your back four of combined eleven for Barcelona and Bayern Munich? So I actually went a bit more Barca than I you, and I know that. So I went mm. Kunde, Guarasi, Inigo Martinez, and Alfonso Davies. I think right now I'm not surprised with any of the center backs of of Bayern Munich. I think Upamecano is the best that they have, but even so, for me, it's worthwhile. You know, just pointing out, highlighting how good the pair of Inigo and Cuarci have been. This game today, <laughs> every duel they win. And that's insane, dude. That's absolutely insane. Particularly because we saw Inigo like this last season, you know. I remember the game against Napoli where Osimen just pushed him out of out of way. And, and, and forever, yeah. I thought like, you know what? No, you're not the guy. And I, and I almost almost crossed him off for the entirety of his career. But now he's come back. He's been really good. And Gubarsi, like 17 years of age and doing what he's doing right now, that's insane as well. So for me, kudos to them too. And for them, they're my starting players. You know, Davis for Baldi is also an interesting debate. I'm wondering if anybody of you have put Baldi in there. Nah, I got I got Davies. He's just he's just a little step ahead. He's got a couple more years of experience. I, I think he just notches out Balde. But next to him, I've got Kubarsi. But then I did go Upamecano because I I think we're seeing a maybe just the little chink in the armor of Barcelona in that high line where Martinez and Kubarsi aren't the fastest. No. I think we can we can admit that Upamecano gives you that pace, gives you that power. So I'd be going Kubarsi, Upamecano, and then Kunde on the right hand side. Marka, who you got? Uh, I've got Kunde on the right hand side, uh, Davies on the left hand side. So that's common for all of us. Yeah. The centre back pairing that I have is I I initially planned of putting both Barcelona centre backs, but then I thought that 
it's going to be a bit far fetched to have both center backs of Barcelona. Do I want to so badly because <laughs> they have been perfect together? But I've gone for the I'll I'll go for the center back partnership of Kim Min Jae and Paul Kubasi. Because Ooh, Kim Min Jae the positions the positions they play as well. Yeah, okay. And Kim Min Jae like I I haven't watched Bayern Munich a lot this season, but then yeah. obviously I started watching them like three days back. I've been watching a few of their matches. Kim yeah. Min Jae has seemed solid to me. There yeah. have been instances where, and Upa Mekano, there are instances where still like he has to be covered up for, but Kim Min Jae is always there. So I would say this is the and then positional wise it obviously makes sense. Like Kubar, he likes to play on the right hand side. Kim Min Jae likes to play on the left hand side. So yep. I think that that's going to be my backline. Okay, I like it. I like it. Marco, let, let's stick with you. Who you got in your midfield there? Oh, man, and are you doing a flat three? Are you playing with an attacking nah. mid? I'm going to be playing with a four four two. I personally Ooh. because I I don't I like I could not pick one between Lewandowski and Harry Kane. <laughs> I just could not. Honestly, that that might be the move. I went with a four three three, but you might be right. I'm I'm interested to see who you got in your midfield okay, then. So yeah. I, I, no, that is why the things became difficult for me in the midfield because then you have to pick four out of all the all of those players, man, which was very difficult. Yeah. So, and then like we all know, who are in the front two? Okay. Yeah, uh, Lewandowski and uh, Harry Kane. Okay. So that that sure. goes out of the. This team is gonna lose all their matches, though. <laughs> but, <laughs> okay, so on the left hand side, I've gone for Rafinha. Love it. Correct answer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, in the middle, I've gone for. Like, I, I, if I'm not wrong, Musiala is not going to be playing this match. Yeah. And so is uh, Pablo, which is also not going to be playing this match, right? Yep. Yeah. So in the midfield, I went for Kimik and Pedri. Hmm. Yep. Okay. Now like where the thing with was this? the right wing. Now that was inc- very interesting because see, Lamin Yamal has been top notch, but so has been are, Michael Oliver. Are yeah. you about to leave out Lamin Yamal? No, no, see, see, see. I, I mean, I wanted to mention it. That yeah. <laughs> Michael, okay. I, I, okay. I didn't just want to come out and be like, oh, Lamin Yamal on the right. Because I think that would sure. be very ignorant of how good Michael Olise has been. Yeah. He has been too good. He has been too good. <laughs> One of the finest players for Bayern Munich. Okay. I don't see, I, I, I can understand if it could, it could be my bias. It could be my bias. I'm putting it out there. But sure. I don't think that Michael Olise is better than Lamin Yamal. Like, Lamin Yamal is too good so yeah. I'll, I'll have him on the right hand side so that makes my midfield of Rafinha Pedri Kimmich and uh, on the right hand side I've got Lamin Yamal if Musiala was available and if he was mm. fit then things would become very dif- different then yeah. it would be very spicy man yeah yeah okay Buga you wanna well what formation did you go with you go 4-3-3 three, three, or did you do something similar uh, I went four two three one because both teams play the same formation, so I just went position by position. So I went okay. Pedri and Kimmich both in the double pivot. I think yep. similar to Marca, that's something that can happen. On the left, I also went with Rafinha, so that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I went with Lamin Jamal on the right, but the same way as Marca says, Olise I think has been absolutely outstanding. He has been the shining light for Bayern Munich alongside Hurricane. That combination they're making together, it's it's really good. Um, but as that number ten position. Uh, the two number 10s, well, let's say, the number 10s that Barcelona had at their disposal for this game, I decided to go with Dani Olmo. Because for me, Dani Olmo, <laughs> even though Dani Olmo is not currently fit enough to play, for me, if Dani Olmo 50%, it's better than Müller at the moment. That's really oh. what I think. I think Thomas Müller is taking a, a hit in these past few seasons, but he's still I an just, amazing I player. Just... I just hope but, Müller doesn't turn up again. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. <laughs> He's probably going to score a hat-trick against us now. But Musiala would have been a whole different shot if he could have played this game, right? But I think, yeah. as Marca did, the play was probably leaving out this number 10 and having an extra striker. So mm. I think this position is the, is the weakest one of, all, of both teams in terms of the players that are going to be featuring in this game. But I've decided to go with Dani Olmo because I just think that Right now, I'm I'm looking at it. If Dani Olmo, you were to play 
for Bayern Munich, I think he would start over Thomas Müller. That's the way I thought about it. You know, if, if Daniel Müller was a Bayern Munich player, he would probably play it over Thomas Müller in a game of this magnitude. Yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, who who do you have at striker then, Buga? I have Lewandowski at striker. Mm, okay. Okay. I like that. Uh, I have a very similar team. I got uh, Pedri and Kimmich in the midfield. I've got Rafinha on the left. I've got Lamine on the right. But I, I put Mueller in at that 10 spot, baby. I'm, I'm mm. going there. I'm putting him in there. I'm going to save us from any jinx that you guys may have just created by leaving him out. I think he's a great team player. He knows where the goal is, flat out. And he's a big time player. Um, he shows up in championship matches. He shows up when you need him, unlike a Harry Kane, which is why I left him out and went with Lewandowski. <laughs> but Harry Kane, you're of the pod. You forgot about that. He is a friend of the pod. I understand. And that, that's why he'll, he'll get it. He'll understand where we're coming from. Uh, friendship aside, Harry Kane, he'll be coming off the bench, you know? But yeah, I got, I, got, I got Lewandowski for me. He's just too hot this season. If you asked me last year, I would have said Harry Kane. Yeah, of course. Obviously. Right? But this season, Lewandowski, it's just, he's just too hot right now. So I got to go Lewandowski for that. So overall, I think we're, we're pretty close on the starting 11. Couple changes in the back. Couple changes, I think, due to... Due to uh, formation there but we're we're pretty close on an agreed starting 11 i think yeah so i'll be i'll I'll be very interested to see uh what people say in the comments i know we have some Bayern munich fans that listen because i've seen you i've seen you in the comments and i can't wait to get back to you after this match but uh let us know folks what's your combined 11 for Bayern munich and barcelona